Tracy, Pastor Bree here, and I'm so happy that you're joining us for our final week of Broken People. I want to first celebrate those that spoke um, the last few weeks, Ali, Daniel, Ashley, and just the different messages that they gave in terms about how God uses broken people to help build up the kingdom and how he uses people um, and how, you know, just because you're broken, it doesn't mean that um, it's the end and it could just very well be the beginning. And so I want to just go ahead and just dive right on in. Now, I thought back to a time when I was teaching middle school. And if those of you who did not know, yes, I taught middle school um, in Grand Prairie ISD and um, a few years ago. And there was one day that I woke up and I woke up late, like I legit overslept. And like I was in a panic and just so happened that it was raining that day and so honestly I feel like it was the rain's fault because I get that good sleep when it rains and storms and whatnot but I was running late had to take a detour place like streets I've never took before that was just kind of crazy and I'm like trying to get there trying to get there missed my first period class may have missed my second one I can't remember or was planning it was something but in the midst of the chaos and the craziness and me just trying to get there, I was, you know, calmed and given grace by my coworkers who had my back, who had everything under control, who helped me with my missed classes. My Even my students were awesome and just they extended the grace that I needed in the chaos and frustration of being late. And so today's message was actually um, inspired by one of Jesus's closest disciples, Peter. And one of the things that we can take away from him is that it's never too late. Now, for those of you who don't know who Peter is, here's a quick little summary. Andrew, his brother, tells him about this guy named Jesus, and he starts following Jesus. At the time, he was just a fisherman, meaning he was just a regular guy, like that's all he was. And he goes ahead, he starts to follow Jesus. And not just that though, Peter is known as being that guy. We all know someone where we're just like, like, come on, dude, like, why are you saying that? Or why are you acting that way? And Peter was very much that person. And so he's someone that we can relate to in different ways, whether it's someone that we know or at times, if we're being honest with ourselves, is someone that we ourselves can be like as well. And so the first point I want to tackle is, it's not too late, even when you have been unfaithful. Now, as I told you, Peter was one of Jesus' closest disciples. Like, he was in his top three. Like, if you were looking on your phone for your favorites, Peter was there. He was one, like, one of the the top faves okay and so even in the midst of that that means he was close to Jesus living with him eating with him traveling with him and yet when things got rough and tough Peter denied even knowing him he denied knowing him and so we're going to dive into a piece of scripture this is at the time when um, Jesus um, has been betrayed and arrested and all that and so Let's dive right on in. Matthew 26, 69, 75 says, Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he went away weeping bitterly. So being unfaithful means that you're carrying the weight of lies. And we can go ahead and admit, Peter may have been fearful in that moment, which led to his um, lies, honestly. But 
one of the things that we can take away from that is Jesus already knew what was up. He had told him, remember when the rooster crows. And so it makes me think back to times when we may have lied to our parents or someone of authoritative, you know, figure, someone that we trust, where we're lying and we're trying to hold on to the lie so much, but they're, they know the truth. They know before we even admit it. And it just makes me think about how God, our father, he extends us grace, love, and faithfulness, even when we're unfaithful. And so that's something that we can be reminded of. But again, it's not the end for Peter. Again, it's not too late, even when you have to be corrected. It's not too late, even when you have to be corrected. Now, if you read the Bible, which I hope you are, <laughs> but when you dive into the Gospels and you follow the Gospels, and you're going to come across Peter's name quite a bit, okay? And what you will learn is that he's a pivotal character. He's someone who just speaks out, who acts like rashly and impulsively. And there are times that Jesus has to correct him. Now, I just mentioned earlier that he was close to Jesus and like one of his, like on his inner circle, even with amongst the disciples, but yet that didn't mean that Jesus didn't correct him. And so let's go ahead and dive into the next verse, where it's Matthew 16, 21 through 23. It says, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He will be killed, but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Now, some of you may be thinking, Peter was just trying to defend him. He was just trying to defend Jesus. But you have to remember that Jesus came here with a purpose. He had to fulfill God's plan. And so we can't step into the way of God's plan, even when we try to call ourselves defending and protecting and so again that's why Jesus had to correct him and again we just have to remember that we may think we have good intentions but at the end of the day God is in control and here's another um, example of when Peter had to be corrected and this is happening during Jesus's arrest John 16, 8 through 11 says, I told you that I am he, Jesus said, and since I'm the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfill his own statement. I did not lose a single one of these you have given me. Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest slave. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the father has given me? So again, here we go with Peter, who again may have felt he was defending Jesus. But again, you can't get a, get in the way of God's plan. And one thing that we can actually even take away from just that moment is that Jesus knew his purpose. He knew the plan he had. And there was a peace within that of knowing that there was a plan that needed to be fulfilled. We see Jesus who carries a calmness, and then we see Peter who carries a rashness, an impulsive behavior. And so even in that, we can see how Peter was broken. But again, it's not too late. We can learn from Peter that it's not too late to walk in the calling God has for you. It's not too late to walk in the calling God has for you. Now, we've talked about how, again, Jesus had to get on Peter in time of two. And I want to give you a fun fact, actually, about Peter's name. Now, there's a little, you know, um, conversations about it. But at the end of the day, this is the conclusion. Peter's name, also known as Cephas, 
or Cephas, depending on how you want to translate it, uh, pronounce it rather, is translated from Greek, meaning the rock. Now, I want to go ahead and share this piece of scripture with you about something. Matthew 16, 16 through 19 says, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed. Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So again, we see here that Jesus has spoken life over Peter. Jesus sees Peter as one of great influence. And I want to also take a moment of why, even earlier in our discussion, why Peter showed a little bit of his brokenness um, with again, trying to defend Jesus or, you know, and just acting rashly because he knew Jesus, right? He was following him and all the things. And just right here, which was the moment before Jesus had to correct him, he said plainly, you are the Messiah. You're the son of God. And so he acknowledged that Jesus was the son of God, but he wasn't like understanding and grasping again the purpose that Jesus had here on earth. And so again, we can't act out things on impulse in our humanly flesh kind of way. We always have to think about things through the kingdom building kind of way, through our relationship with the Lord. But like I said, it's not too late to walk in the calling that God has for you. And we see this in Acts 2. We're not going to dive into the whole chapter, just bits of it, but I want to encourage you to go ahead and read Acts 2. We see here in Acts 2, 14, it says, then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. Now, at this moment, Peter is speaking at Pentecost. This is a big moment in the Bible and the big moment of the evolution of the church and a big moment when you really learn about the Holy Spirit as well. And so he's talking about the spirit. He's talking about prophecy that's been fulfilled and promises that have been fulfilled. And so again, I really, really, really hope that you read Acts chapter two. At the very end of that, in Acts 2.41, it says, those who believed that what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. Now, this was the start of the church. Peter, the one who was seen as rash, the one that was seen as impulsive, the one that needed correction, he's the one that added 3,000 people to the early church. He's the one that had that influence. And so for those of you who may feel like you are a lost cause, right? I want to remind you that you are not. God sees you, he has spoken life over you, and you have a purpose. You're here for a purpose. And I also want to remind those of you who may know others that you may have labeled as a lost cause. And I want to remind you and encourage you to walk in the same and with the same grace and humility Jesus did with Peter. When you are with them, if you correct them, do it in love. If you are just around them and you're like shaking your head, be patient with them because it's not too late. Now, I want to pose two questions for you all. And they are, I want you to ask yourself, are you getting in the way of what God wants fulfilled? And then the second question is, 
are you walking in the calling God has given you?